What's up guys, back at it again with another video, and we're going to be talking about if Vibrant is a scam. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you after the intro. Okay, so it's been legit two weeks since I last made the video on praising how good Vibrant was. And someone commented a link to a reef to reef thread. Shout out Trickman2 for showing me this because I'm sure as hell wouldn't have found this for at least a couple of months. I read a little more than half of the thread. And if it ends up being true, I think this is one of the spiciest things to happen in the aquarium hobby this year. Make sure to watch the whole video because this doesn't happen every day. I'm spilling the beans. The original poster of the thread goes by the name Taricha. And let me get this out of the way. This dude is a menace to the manufacturers, the product punisher, the business buster. This dude got all the receipts and he left no crumbs. And I would not want to mess with this guy. He did not one, not two, but did 25 tests on Vibrant. Now, I would have been convinced with one or two of them. You know, I'm a simple guy. But a warn of warning, all this stuff is really scientific, and I could barely understand some of these parts, but I'm going to try my best. Take what you will from my highly qualified General Chem 2 knowledge. But yeah, big W for Tericha if this is true. So Tericha put a statement in three parts where he outlines how Vibrant is the same product as Algae Fix, but at three times the price and in a cooler bottle. If you don't know what Algae Fix is, it's a product I would never have used because I would never use chemicals to fix my algae problems because I'm not really a chemical guy. This product seems to be geared towards beginners who have trouble with algae, but essentially it's like a pesticide that's aimed to kill algae and when you check the safety sheet, it says it can be toxic to aquatic life. In fact, when you look at Amazon reviews, some people have reported losing their fish, which is most likely due to errors in dosing, as there are about 5,500 reviews with a 4.3 average rating on Amazon. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It says on the product info not to use it with freshwater crustaceans, and I can see how, if dosed wrong, can kill fish. When I checked the safety data sheet in an EPA risk assessment, there weren't any alarming things about the active ingredient, dimethylaminoethylene dichloride ethyloxalate. Yes, I just said that to sound smart, and also yes, I have no idea what that is, but let's just call it Busan 77. But yeah, there was nothing on both sheets that made me scared of the chemical. All I saw was skin irritation, obviously don't drink it, and you'd probably be fine. It's also only 4.5% of the product, but that's the stuff that's doing the algae killing. I also just skimmed the EPA paper because there's no shot I was reading 65 pages of chemistry stuff, just for the record. I relied more on the safety data sheet API gave us, which is much more digestible and easier to read. Okay, now we get to the spicy stuff. In part one, the first test he did was trying to figure out where the carbons are since it's an organic compound. Basically, from what I got, you just look at the peaks and say that they're both aligned. He did this again, but with other properties, and the graphs lined up every time. In part two, he did some indicator stuff and found out that both Algae Fix and Vibrant have roughly the same concentrations. In part three, he tried to find the differences between the two products. Check out this snippet from him. I actually spent a fairly large amount of time trying to eliminate the very boring, stupid possibility that Vibrant simply replicated the Algae Fix ingredient and concentration and added nothing else. I was unable to eliminate that possibility. Now this is some actual crazy stuff. He's basically saying that there is no difference between each product and you might as well have put algae fix in the bottle and slapped on a vibrant label on it. Later on in the post, he checked the specific gravity, mass, and appearance of dried solution among many other complex chemical properties, which you can take a look at if you understand it. It took me a couple of tries to read it, not gonna lie. And at this point, he was giving too much evidence, which is so funny because I was already sold on part one. My favorite experiment in part three was the centrifuge. And basically a centrifuge is when they spin a liquid and all the solid in it will settle on a pellet on the bottom of the vial. And fun fact, I first learned about this in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But surely a product with bacteria should have some residue in it, right? And that's also shown in other bacterial product samples. But the last one, number six, which is vibrant, is clear like the algae fix, which is not pictured. That's some sussy stuff if you ask me. This product has been advertised by big retailers like BRS and other YouTube channels, including me. But it will be especially interesting to see BRS's response to this thread. Give credit where it's due. Vibrant has promised to remove algae, 
and it did fulfill that promise, you know, even with a little bit of fraud if these allegations are true. One thing that was interesting is that people on the forum have said that they've had unexplained clam debts and that it could have been caused by this product if it ends up being boosting in 77. But in my case, I didn't really have any adverse effects on my invertebrates. You know, snails, crabs, and conches in my reef tank. Converting the toxicity for other invertebrates, this can indirectly be explained by Tericha with a quote, Because of the cationic nature of these chemicals, they're expected to be more potent in freshwater than in hard water. End quote. So I'm guessing that concentrations of this chemical when dosed into freshwater is much more dangerous than saltwater, and therefore is safe for invertebrates excluding clams in saltwater, but not safe for invertebrates in freshwater. Now, before you get all your pitchforks and torches to underwater creations, we still haven't heard their side of the story. And at the end of the day, if they end up admitting it, it still raises the question on if this is still a valid product to use. Because again, it works to a degree. Let's say the allegations are true, what would be our next steps? Should we still continue to use the compound and switch to algae fix, or should we stop using it entirely? I think personally, I'll still use the product, but only in emergencies, or I'd stop dosing it so regularly, but until then, we will cross that bridge when we get there. At this point, we will have to wait for a statement from Underwater Creations or BRS regarding these test results. In the meantime, I will stop using the product regularly and start using it more sparingly because it still works for me, with no detrimental side effects. That's the end of this interesting issue, and I'll see you in a bit.